I did Taekwondo when I was 15. This is not something I talk about a lot because I went to a McDojo. I'm not here to bash on Taekwondo. In fact, the reason why I wanted to do Taekwondo was because there was someone in my Kung Fu school who came from a Taekwondo background. I watched a competition where he knocked his competitor out cold with a spinning hook kick like that. And I thought, that's Taekwondo? I want to do that. Now his dojo was a bit too far for me. So I thought, so long as I can learn these super fast kicks, I'm game. I settled for a Taekwondo school that was within walking distance of my house and there was no Yelp or Google review at that time. So I showed up ready to pay my monthly tuition. The instructor introduces himself and does his business pitch in broken English. Nothing wrong with that, but he kept talking about himself, his accolades, certificates where he trained the US military, a photo of him jumping 10 feet in the air and kicking a board. Now, these aren't exactly signs of a McDojo, but I felt that something was off. He wasn't talking about his students. He wasn't talking about how his classes were structured. To be fair, this might have been a language barrier. I just wanted to get down to cost because I was already sold on Taekwondo. But then the instructor turned to me in a deep, serious tone. Before, Before we, we talk, talk about price, price, you have to take this lineage of Taekwondo seriously. You have to keep this style pure because this lineage is not from Korea. It's from Asia. Okay, well, um, might be a language thing. This is Taekwondo. I don't know anything about Taekwondo. You have to swear to never compete using this style of Taekwondo. This style is not meant for competition. Well, my goal wasn't really to compete anyway, so I'm okay with that. I paid the upfront cost with my birthday money and I saw a few kids walk through the door and I figured, hey, let me take the class. It might be the next class or it might be this class. I don't care. The instructor then said, oh, no, this is the black belt class. You can't watch this class because this is too advanced for you. In hindsight, this experience demonstrated clear signals of the McDojo. At that time, I came up with reasons to justify all of those signals. Lineage coming from a general region of Asia. While Kung Fu is also from Asia, the instructor is probably tired of describing Korea to parents who think Africa is a country. Students forbidden from competing. That's fine. I just wanted to learn how to do the spinning kicks. Preteens with black belts. Man, I wanted a black belt too. I've been doing Kung Fu since I was eight years old and never once had a belt. You know how I mentioned that something just felt off? In the short time I was in that dojo, this feeling kept resurfacing. And for the sake of this video, I'm gonna pinpoint it to three specific incidents. Number one, forbidden techniques. Now I knew from experience that traditional martial arts instructors get very sensitive when new students come in talking about their old martial arts style. So yes, this is Taekwondo, not Kung Fu. I'll happily wear my white belt. So for the first day of class, I started with the basic techniques. Stance work, forward movement, backward movement, do basic kicks, front kick, the round kick, crescent kick, and then the side kick. Whoa, 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 whoa wait, no, no side, side kicks, kicks for beginners. beginners. Interesting. Well, you know what? This is the first day of class. And this, if we were to just narrow it down to basic techniques, does seem like a lot. And I'm looking around, yellow belts and white belts are not doing side kicks at all. And to me, forbidden techniques aren't exactly secretive or dangerous. It was just more like a sequencing thing where you have to master the basics before you get into an advanced technique. If you try the advanced technique, the instructor usually brings it back down to the basics and tell you to practice the basics first. That's what I thought was going on with sidekicks. And I was hoping he'd break down the fundamentals so I'd just practice the fundamentals. I didn't have to actually execute the sidekick itself. So at the end of the class, I was like, let's go through the basics of a sidekick. Lift, pivot, kick, retract, down. And the instructor screams, stop. I thought he was talking about students who were kicking each other. No, he was talking to me. He said, you are only a white belt, no sidekicks too dangerous. I thought this is probably a sequencing thing. What am I here doing a Kung Fu version of a sidekick in a Taekwondo class where they probably do things differently. That's so disrespectful of me. That was what I thought until the second incident sparring. Now at this point, I never sparred, not even in Kung Fu. I'm a new white belt. I'm probably not going to be able to spar. I can't even do sidekicks. Week two, put on a chest plate and start kicking each other. Okay. Well, maybe I'll be paired with someone with the same experience, right? Nope. You are paired with the advanced belts. Well, okay. That makes sense. You know, pair off with someone that's more experienced, experience beats size, experienced people probably have more control. Oh, and uh, white belts are not allowed to use forbidden techniques. Now forbidden techniques, that's just the sidekick, right? No, I wasn't allowed to block because I didn't learn the proper blocking techniques yet. You can only do the moves you were taught. Stance, moving forwards, moving backwards, front kick, round kick, and crescent kicks. To be fair, these tools were enough. I was sparring 10 year old red belts, but let's compare it to what they can do. Two, three round kicks in a row. An ax kick, tornado kick, spinning hook kick. I remember distinctly that a kid threw a spinning hook kick to my head and I did one of those Floyd Mayweather Philly shells and my instructor shouted, not, not a proper, proper technique. technique. Sorry, you know what? That was not Taekwondo. But how about movement? You learned how to walk backwards in Taekwondo, right? No. no. So I asked, just stand? Yes. yes. Now, 
I was twice the size of every kid I sparred with, so a front kick was more than enough. That was also the justification I made up in my mind. You are bigger than everyone else, so if anything, you should be the responsible one. I ended up staying another three months with this instructor, and it wasn't until the last incident that forced me to leave this dojo. Testing and testing fees. Now, I mentioned before I was paying these classes with my birthday money, and I was able to afford six months of tuition. What I did not factor in were testing fees. For some dojos, I get it. The testing fee covers things like equipment, certificate, the belt, the stripe. Sometimes they might even charge a little bit more, but you know, you're doing business, I get it. The testing fee at this dojo is $20 per test. Now, $20 meant that I was skipping lunch, for an entire month. But I thought, so long as I was progressing at a reasonable rate, I could do it. But it's $20 a test, testing is every one to two weeks depending on how many classes you take, and these tests aren't for each belt. These were tests per stripe, and there were so many stripes. Now my goal, again, was not to advance in rankings, so long as I had space to practice my kicks, that's fine. What the instructor never mentioned up front was that testing is mandatory. I don't mean mandatory like if you don't take the test, you'll be learning the same moves and same techniques techniques day by day. Mandatory like you cannot attend class if you do not take a test. The instructor told a student to sit in the corner and wait for his parents because they did not pay the testing fee. He wasn't allowed to step on the mats. Not because of tuition, because of testing fees. And the reason why I stopped was because I could not pay for these testing fees. Now, I wished it was a dramatic moment where I stood up and said, no, this is wrong, I'm not gonna stand for this. I actually tried to negotiate my payments for tests. Like, can I just take all the tests at once, you know, do all the forms, techniques, and everything, and just pay one fee? Instead of $20, how about I pay $40 for three tests? Is that okay? Remember what I said before about the instructor's English? It wasn't good when he was explaining techniques and all, which I get, but when it came to payment and money, suddenly he's like a Wall Street broker. He so eloquently said, testing is a part of this Taekwondo lineage. If you cannot pay for tests, you cannot take my class. That was the same day I left that dojo. I want to be clear, I'm sharing this experience not to bash on Taekwondo or traditional martial arts. Yes, I was frustrated, but it was the fact that I could not pay for these classes that prevented me from going back to that dojo. It was only after I started earning money as an adult that I started reflecting on this experience and became a lot more critical in selecting martial arts schools. This is also a message to all of you that if something doesn't feel right about your martial arts school, don't bury that feeling. Now, it might seem embarrassing to think that you've been scammed, cheated, or learning that your martial arts school is fake, but that gut feeling to Telling you that something isn't right, it's there for a reason. And you shouldn't feel obligated to stay if you're not comfortable with it. What about you? What are some red flags of a McDojo that you've seen or heard? Let me know down in the comments below.